Let's transform into Emily from The Corpse Bride, one of my favorite movies, my favorite characters. This is gonna be super fun. So when designing the look in my head, I definitely want this to be more user-friendly. Like, we're not covering the brows and extending crazy eyes and all that, because if you wanna be her for Halloween, I want you to be able to follow this tutorial. And I'm also super excited, because this was one of the top five characters I had going into Halloween season, and what better than to use the new Corpse Bride collection. This is an entire makeup collection inspired by Corpse Bride from She Glam. I also want to give a big thank you to She Glam for sponsoring today's video so I could make it extra special for you guys with costumes and transformation and the whole nine yards. Let's dive in and open this bad boy up. So first up, we have the Moonlight Eyeshadow Palette. This packaging is so nice. All right here is the packaging. It has gorgeous, like, bridal lace all over it. And then this is the inside. Oh my god, it is so perfect. The reason I love this so much is obviously because we have the amazing blues and shimmers and blacks and silvers. Whenever you're doing Halloween makeup, for instance, with this, this skin is going to be blue. You want great gray mattes to be able to contour with because that's obviously how we're going to add the shade and dimension. So I'm so happy these are in here. All right, guys, here are the shadows swatched on the arm. So in row one, we have the shade Wedding Day, Everglot, this cool tone transition, Butterflies, then the shade Victor, which is a blue-based gray. Second row, we have the shade Dreary, my favorite shade, look at this blue, in Emily, a beautiful blue matte in the shade Hopscotch, then this gray shimmer in Victoria. Then in the final row, we have this unbelievable silver shimmer. This is in the shade Nuvu Rich. Then we have a matte gray brown in Van Dort, a matte gray in Burks, and a beautiful matte black in Land of the Dead. I'm going to go ahead and insert a video from my iPhone so you could really see the true colors in case it doesn't show up great on camera. Next up, we have the Ethereal Glow Lip Balm. On the lip balm, take this off and it is a wedding ring. And now we have three shades of the Ghostly Glitter Gel Underworld. Ooh, they're like a gel putty almost. First up is the shade Tears to Shed. This is a really beautiful blinding silver. Next up is this beautiful blue shade in Blue K. And then we have this gray in the shade Underworld. And now we have the Beaming Butterfly Highlighter. Can you see this holographic? Oh my God, there we go. Yes obsessed. And this is what the shade looks like. It might not show up on camera, but it's like this beautiful silver with a lavender shift. And then we have a pair of lashes as well as three liquid lipsticks. So let's go ahead and swatch these bad boys. The packaging is so cute. I'm running out of hand, so I had to do it on my left hand, so don't mind the swatches. But from the top down, so starting at that red, is the shade Beating Heart, and then the shade in the middle is Emily, and the one on the bottom is Rosy Cheeks. All right, guys, so that is the whole collection. I'm so excited to use all this, so without any further ado, let's dive in and get this transformation started. So to start, we're going to prime our eyelids, and obviously we're going to go in with the blue color that her skin is. So I'm using the Face Base Colored Foundations from Indie Beat Cosmetics. These things are phenomenal for Halloween transformations, color correcting, cosplay, everything. So I came up with the color I think is good. It was one full pump of blue, two full pumps of white, and then the littlest bit of green. Her skin actually has a little bit of that greenish undertone, so the littlest bit of green. And now on a concealer brush, we are going to carve out the brows. All right, so I just pressed that in with my beauty sponge, and before we set that or add any powder to it, I'm actually going to do the brows. So I'm going in with a brown pomade. Any brown pomade is fine. So her brows are pretty thin, so we're going to start defining the bottom border. And the reason I'm doing this, I honestly should have started with this. I want to clean up the line underneath with this blue base base. Feel free to fill them very blocky because obviously hers are very blocky, but try to fill them as thin as possible. Normally if I was doing my makeup, I would go a little higher with this brow, but I want them to be as thin as possible because hers are thin. All right, now we're going to do the little turn up she has with her brow. So this is why I'm using a pomade because it's for me, it'll be easier with a brush. Whenever you're doing artistic work like this, my philosophy is underdo it. Don't make it as big as you think or don't go as high as you think because it's always easier to add 
add and it is to take away. All right, browser on and see what I mean? It's just starting with the browse. Now you can take the blue and really clean up the lines and get everything the way you want it. Like even on the inside, the curves here. So I made a mistake, start with your eyes, then do the blue. But now I'm just gonna take a white eyeshadow and we're going to a matte white eyeshadow and I'm gonna highlight the brow bone and set this blue with that white. We're doing blue on blue. We don't wanna lose the dimension in the brow bone so that when we do our deep blue smoky eye, we actually have contrast. And because this isn't like lightening too much, I might actually take this and just set this blue. All right, so now in the Corpse Bride palette with the shade Hopscotch, we're gonna take this on a fluffy brush. This is the deep blue matte. I love that there's a mirror in this palette. We're gonna start stamping this into the crease. We want to keep the eyeshadow very rounded because we're obviously going for the look of her very big round animated doe eyes. So we don't really want to bring it winged like normal eyeshadow and don't worry too much about blending. And now I'm going to switch to that same brush we put the white on with and use that to blend out the edges of this blue. And now that we have that dark blue on, do you see why I put that white on the brow bone? Because now we actually have that contrast. All right, so the blue is down. I did put it on the lids as well because now we're gonna go in with the Emily shade, this gorgeous satin blue, and we're gonna press this bad boy all over the lid. Oh, I mean. Oh, I mean, that is just incredible. And now take the brush you deposited that dark blue with and just blend out the edges to make sure everything is married together nicely. All right, guys, so the glitter is down. She doesn't really have liner on, and to be honest, I don't really want to put liner on because I don't want to cover all of this gorgeous, beautiful blueness. So I might honestly just pop on mascara and the lashes. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. And this is another reason I start with my eyes. When you're doing artistic work like this, you want to be messy or it's if you have to be super precise it's gonna take you forever you can just be messy and get everything all crazy clean it up with a makeup wipe and then you can just start with the complexion so while my lash dries down I want to show you I'm gonna take this really beautiful silver in wedding day with my finger and just press this on the dead center of the eyelid almost like a halo eye especially since we're going for a very round doll like look adding a little bit there see that is gonna make the eye look much rounder. Now I'm just going ahead and applying the lashes. These lashes from She Glam are perfect for an Emily transformation. They're very separated like hers are, but the best part is that they don't hide the eyeshadow, so it's not like you're gonna be putting on a lash that's covering up all the work you just did. All right, lashes are on. Now we're gonna start the bottom lash line, and because we didn't cover the brows, so we obviously lost that real estate bringing the eye up, we're gonna bring the eye down. So I'm taking a white pencil, and we're going to tight line with the white to really just white everything out and now that's gonna white out the eye so when we bring the white underneath it gives the illusion that the eye is bigger than it is all right now with our white face base foundation on a more like rounded brush like this and connecting to the outside lash line right here we're gonna bring this in and round it out don't worry about being too neat with this because we're gonna use our eyeshadow to clean up and like give us that lower lash line with the shadow. It'll be much easier to do that than trying to be super precise with this white. So we're putting our face base on just like that. Now I'm taking my white eyeshadow on the exact same brush and we are going to set this white and see how I can be messier with this and press this in and then use our shadow to create the lower line. But I just really want to make sure this is as white as possible and as set as possible. All right, now with our face base, that blue concoction we made in the beginning on a very detailed, just pinched brush, we're going to clean up that white and give us our lower lash line. All right, so see, we cleaned up that line with the white. Now I'm gonna take a fluffy brush with a little translucent powder, and we're just gonna set that blue where it touches the white. So when we go in with our other powders, everything blends out easier. All right, now we're gonna take that dark blue again, hot scotch on an angled liner brush, and we're gonna start stamping this along the fake lower lash line connected with the top and we're only taking this about that far in 
We're not going all the way into here. We wanna leave that little part open, but see how that's defining our lower lash line now? And now on a more pinched shadow brush, I am gonna dip into the darker blue hopscotch, and we're gonna connect the outside smokiness on top to the bottom. So this is the only part we're really doing the bottom lash line right now because see, this is what's really gonna give us that round shape. Do you see the difference between this eye and the other eye without that smokiness on it? So now that that's blended, we are gonna start the face. I'm going to carve out the top brows to get the lines super clean. This is why I start with detail work like the eyes. A lot of times when you're doing Halloween makeup, I know it's like super exciting to just like dive in and paint your face blue, but I promise you working this way will make everything much easier because if you paint your whole face blue, you're gonna mess everything up with the detail work. So see how that allowed me to get super clean lines on the tops of my brows and now we can go ham painting the face blue. And we're blue! Now I'm taking my blue beauty sponge and just pressing this into the skin, pressing it underneath the eye to make sure it blends seamlessly with the work we did under there. And this is just really gonna melt it into the skin. I feel like I'm giving Genie from Aladdin vibes. I mixed a little bit of a darker blue and we are gonna use this with the exact same brush we deposited the color with to contour as though we are literally doing glam makeup. Pressing it underneath the cheekbones, picking a little bit on the sides of the forehead here. Literally, this is like glam contouring. Exactly what we would do for that. Connect a little to the outside of the brow. Now I'm going to do the jawline and I'm shaving off a little bit of my jaw like that to give it a more feminine look. So see when I'm looking straight ahead, it just slims a little bit. All right, now for her nose. Her damn nose is bone thin. Honestly, the entire center of the face is so thin. So I'm taking just white on a very pinched fluffy brush and we are gonna use this brush to stamp on this white. Don't worry about blending. All right, now that we have that white painted on, I'm gonna switch to my beauty blender and just Press that in. We're ready to set the complexion and I recommend using a white translucent powder instead of like a colored or banana. It also depends on your skin tone. But honestly, even if you do have darker skin and you're doing this, you now have blue skin. Just because it won't take away any of the tone and the brightness that we just worked for. And we're just gonna go around and set the face. This will keep the creams in place all night, all day, whatever you're doing this for. And also putting this layer of powder down. Now when we go in and enhance all of our shading and sculpting with powder, it'll make the powders blend out a lot easier. Now that everything is set with powder, we can start shaping the face with powders. So before I contour the nose, I'm gonna go in with a white eyeshadow and highlight the bridge of the nose before we add our darkness in. So don't be afraid to even overdo your white a little bit here. All right, now that the white is on, we're gonna go back in with that dark blue shade and we're gonna start carving out the nose. We're getting there and we're back. I was not kidding when I said bone thin, no pun intended. I didn't show that on camera because honestly, it took me a long time and I'm not an authority on the subject of nose contouring. You do not need to contour your nose this much. You can just do it down the sides. The only thing we wanna make sure we do is dip into that darker blue shade and we want to press this underneath the nose because her nose is very upturned and adding darkness here will make it look lifted. See that already? Almost like a pig nose, we want that. Okay, now we're gonna add a little bit more of that dark blue. So I'm just taking a fluffy brush and pinching it and blending out a little bit more of this dark blue to make it a little more smoky under here. And same thing, if you felt like you overdid it or it's not blending the way you want, just take your white eyeshadow and marry that to the edges of that blue and it will blend everything out perfectly while highlighting the cheekbone. All right, now we're gonna take more of that blue. We're going to reinforce our contour. She is a very round face shape. If you have an oval face shape like me, we wanna bring the forehead 
down under the cheekbone, but far, far back. We really just want to make the face look very like skull-like and hollow rather than contoured. Now we're going to really point the chin because her chin is very pointy and just stamp in a triangular shape. And we're going to bring this along the jawline because my face is much longer than hers. So doing this and adding in this darker shadow will bring the face up. Because at the end of the day, we're trying to get a round face shape. And if you already have one, you are very lucky. Okay, now I'm gonna take this gray up here, which is the shade Victor, and we're gonna use that to contour a bit more. But this gray is really gonna sculpt and add in that shadow. See that difference there? Compared to this side is just the blue. That gray is really what is gonna give you those angular structured features. This is really what's gonna make us look dead. All right, now we're gonna take the black in the Corpse Bride palette and triangulate her nostrils, just like that. All right, now she has a little bit of dirt and a skin crack here, so we're gonna go in with this gray. This is the shade Barkus. It's a gray, but it's like a brown gray, which is perfect for that kind of dirty look. And now with an angled liner brush, we're gonna dip into the matte black in the palette, which is the shade Land of the Dead, and we're gonna use this to make the crack. Now using the white eyeshadow, a great way to make it look like skin is to trace the edges with white. That's what makes it look like it's almost peeling up. Okay, now using the black eyeshadow on the palette, we're gonna sketch out her base crack over here. All right, so now for lashes on the lower lash line, I picked any old pair I had of spiky lashes because I wanted them to be very separated and I cut them shorter. So these lashes are actually for this top here if you're gonna use them as real lashes. But when you're doing them on the bottom, you're gonna flip them upside down and put them on the opposite eye. So see, just like this. And we're gonna connect it to the outside lash line. Just like that. Ooh, that feels weird. Now we're gonna take this beautiful silver shade and use this to highlight our inner corner. Now I'm gonna take the gel shadow in Tears to Shed, press this on top of that to intensify it a bit. All right, so other than the lips, that is it for the face, but it is time to do the body, so the shirt's coming off. All right, the body is painted. I wish I could do like the skull arms for you guys, but I just got new tattoos on my arms. Less than two weeks ago, like I'm still in the washing it and antibacterial phase, so I certainly cannot put body paint on it. But we are gonna do just the chest and the collarbone. So depending on how hardcore you wanna go, if you wanna make sure your body paint doesn't transfer, take translucent powder and do not tap off the excess and just press this on top like crazy. This will keep everything from transferring and coming off. All right guys, now we're gonna thin up the neck because her neck is very thin. So see what I did here? We're gonna repeat it on this side. I'm taking that gorgeous matte blue. We have used this so much in this tutorial. And after I press it on, we wanna blend back. We don't wanna blend forward because see, we want the center. We want that nice clean line to make the neck look super thin. Hey guys, this is a little post editing note from Future Me because I didn't really explain it, but the reason I'm doing this is because the reveal, we're gonna switch to a black background and it's gonna make my neck look super thin. You by no means need to do this, but to get that effect, I even used a little bit more of the face base foundation to carve out the neck and brighten it up. And I even go in with black shadow to really black out these areas. So my neck looks super thin, which you'll see coming up. All right, so now you can see, especially when I switch to a black background, it's gonna look like my neck is that big. So now we're gonna do the collarbone. So I'm dipping into the white face base. So what we're gonna do, sketch out our own using the face base. All right, we shaped out that V collarbone. I think it's even. All right, now I'm gonna take my white eyeshadow and we are gonna highlight the top of this bone. So see, we're highlighting the top of that bone and blending the white down. All right, now that we highlighted the bones, see that on the inside, we're gonna shadow behind it, trusty blue shade as we've been doing this whole time. And you're literally carving out the reverse of what we just did with the white. See how that's creating a shadow? 
All right, now we're gonna take the She Glam highlighter and just highlight the high points of the face, but on the Cupid's bow. She has a very highlighted upper lip. All right, now for lipstick, I'm gonna take these two shades and mix them. This is Rosy Cheeks and Emily, and mixed together over here is like the perfect shade for her. All right, so to get that like almost brat style lip that she has like that, we are going to open the mouth and continue the bottom border straight up. Follow the angle of the lips like that and then connect it to the top. All right, guys, this is the final look. I'm obsessed. Using the new She Glam Corpse Bride collection, I am gonna go ahead, pop on the wig, the drag, the contacts, and I'll be right back to reveal the full transformation into Emily from Corpse Bride.